Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another one of these StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 bot AI casts. We have got ourselves what should be a good one here today. Although I say that with a little bit of hesitation. As it is actually a new bot on the block. And this could be the first game that I actually upload of it. But not the first one that I've cast. And let me tell you why. Because I was looking to cast an evil Zoe. A Zerg bot that's looking really good lately. Against... Against just like Sharkbot. But then I realized apparently the author of Sharkbot made a Zerg bot. And now we're watching a game in which it's drone rushing poor tier T over here. So ladies and gentlemen, the moral of this story is hit that like button. As this one gets started off with a dirty, dirty drone rush. Injured drones microing against SCVs using their regen mechanic. They will actually kill off one or two of those SCVs. Looks like just, yeah, two have died so far. They're injured, so they're pulling away. They know to avoid the fight. And here come the homies as the drone pain train is on the way. And I'm not sure that Tier T is going to be able to stand up to this. As if three drones were causing this much trouble, there's going to be a lot more trouble for Tier T. Now, worker rush bots are no stranger to this, uh, to the SC2 botting scene. We'll see which one's going to come out on top here, though. So far, a lot of SCVs have died for Tier T. The command center is not getting up. The boys are working here, and it is, uh, it is a mess, this game already. The SCVs seem to be doing pretty good for themselves. The drones are trying to mineral walk away. They're all very, very red. And there's lots of death on both sides. Six to ten have died so far. The racks did finish up. However, there's not enough resources to build a single marine. The drones, though, are being chased all the way home. Incredibly injured. Now they're going to turn and potentially try and keep Tier T busy. Uh, just by constantly harassing. If Tier T can get out enough resources to make one marine, that would be all that it takes. The SCVs are hiding. Back on the other side of the map, though, Sharkling is mining with its, like, four or five drones. Six drones? And so, what a mess this game was to start things off as all those drones actually perished on the other side of the map in what must have been just, like, a second of fighting. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, leave a comment down below if you want to see more of these games. And I honestly didn't expect a worker rush for from Sharkling. But uh, mad, mad props to the pop for doing that. Because I cast another game that was looking really cool. It was going to be going for Mutas. Mutalisk against Evil Zoe. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And then Evil Zoe totally just bugged out. And so depending on how this game goes, I may upload the other one or I may upload them both together. And so, yeah. And that's where I'm at as far as casting this new bot goes. Sharkling saying, are you going to expand <laughs> after drone rushing and completely destroying Tyr's economy? That is a little BM to say. That if that was the latter game, that would throw me on tilt. Now, Sharkling could be on a bit of trouble as there is a Reaper crossing the map for Tier T. Tier T did deal with that drone rush pretty well, I think. I mean, it seems the bots are fairly even. SCVs are repairing up the command center. We'll see if they're going to repair up their fellow SCV friends. Nope, just go back to mining. The Reaper does come on in here as a drone starts to chase it. The drone, the dog with the car, not sure what it would do if it caught it. And actually, a couple more drones do start chasing that Reaper. The spawning pool will be done momentarily, so we can see a queen be made, some lings potentially. Still, though, just a one base Zerg against a one base Terran definitely favors the Terran. And now we do have just that Reaper going on home. Tier is a bot that tends to just scout with the Reaper, doesn't necessarily try and harass. Orbital Command's on the way. Command Center is now on the way. Shark Nice elects to go for a spine crawler in the back of its base, interestingly enough. That's one way to deal with harassment. I don't hate it. Uh, it's a big investment, though, this early on. And yeah, well, big props to the bot authors that do program bots of multiple races. Tier T, there's been a Tier P and a Tier Z. Tier T, definitely the standout, however. And now Sharkbot, the author Shark Nice, producing a Sharkling. And yeah, 
We're on site Delta. The intro got cut off a little bit with uh, with this game starting off the way that it did. It's like Tyr is getting up its tech, going to potentially get some Hellions on the way as it does land that factory, starts up a starport, the natural base is done. So the economy is definitely in the lead for Tyr. However, in these bot games, things can change up. And okay, Sharkling is potentially going to be going for Mutas once more. As, uh, yeah, that is something that's cool to see. We definitely don't have enough Mutas, probably because they're not super great in bot games, it seems to have been established. They're super pricey. Roaches are so efficient. We do see a scan go down. I'm not sure where that was. Da, 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 da. I do not know where the scan was. Anyway, we've got that natural up for Sharkling. It is building that spire, so kind of one base muting it up. And, and then Tier T just going for a very fast third command center. So we'll see how well Tier does deal with mutas. It's been a while since I've cast a bot that does go for mutas. Traditionally, they don't do very well, but if a bot author can do it, it very well could be the bot author of Sharkbot. And I do love the drone rush behavior coupled with the the muta play. Now this is an incredibly low eco muta play, but it should be able to squeeze out a few at some point. It's like a couple lings coming on in here, chasing that reaper. Will they be able to get that SCV? They're not targeting it down, so that will get up just fine. The spire is on the way. And is mo gonna be done momentarily. Tyr doesn't have a lot of anti-muta stuff right now with just one marine, one liberator on the way. So the mutas could get damage done. However, the problem is it is gonna be and is presently a single muta. Make that two muta. Three mutas. And will we see four? I think so. Currently the drone count is very hard capped for Sharkling though. The way that it does its macro, I guess, is that it just is completely prioritizing the units, even though its economy is in, in the dirt, basically. And so we'll see if it ever does eventually pivot into making more workers. It's building the spine crawler for now, replacing that one drone. And one muta does actually lock onto this liberator. That's good to see. I believe a Liberator can take a Muta in a fight, but oh man, these drones are going to be in trouble. Liberator going to start shooting. Oh no, 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 no. There's no reaction program from Sharkling. And so these Mutas are going to have to get a lot of work done on the other side of the map to kill off three Terran bases as one of these Mutas comes back. But yeah, Shark Sharkling's economy is just being destroyed. The Queen comes forward. The Muta is derping as it's being pulled to the other side of the map. And the Liberator may eventually get dealt with. Another Muta pops out. But man, that was a big economic blow, and there's actually no mineral mining left for Sharkling. And if I was a betting man, I'd bet that there's going to be no transfer of the workers. And so, I think uh, Sharkling has just been, had its knees cut out from underneath it. As the Mutas, they've been getting a little bit of work done. Not too much, though. As the Marines with Medivac support. And so, yeah, I think just the economy of Sharkling wasn't enough to make the mutas. And so, yeah, like, it's never going to transfer drones. So, unfortunately, this game is basically over. I think I am going to upload this as a two-parter, though, ladies and gentlemen. So, there will be another Sharkling game that I just cast behind this. Or in front of it. I'll have to decide that, but, uh, yeah. Sharkling not mining any any resources. It's one of those things. How often is a bot going to be in this situation? Although the... Oh, it actually did transfer workers. Oh, well done. Okay, it's not dead. I mean, it is dead because it's 7 to 59 workers against a 3 basing tier. Which isn't a mess around bot. But that is actually really cool to see. That it did transfer workers. Not every bot has that sort of redundancy programmed into it but I guess at some point Sharkling was like my mineral to gas ratio is not good we gotta fix that the mutas are just hanging out back at home for now I think it is safe to say that Sharkling is dead just uh, that liberator did do too much damage and then the rushing of the mutas 
they did not get anywhere near enough damage done for them to be worth it. Maybe the maybe the micro needs to be looked at, like they kind of just engage and then get out of there. You could potentially have a muta running at every base, sort of like a banshee and just harassing non-stop. So maybe splitting them up is the behavior that should be programmed into them. For now though, Tyr is just building on up, 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 getting lots of racks out. And Sharkling, I think, is about to be hit by a bus momentarily, and there's not going to be a single thing it can do about it. it. Seems to hit that 18 worker mark and then start making more and more mutas. Meanwhile, 10 marines at a time. 34 marines. Two two on the way for Tier. Tier is a very impressive macro bot. Great redundancy that it was able to come back from that ridic ridiculous drone rush. The muta count is growing and growing and growing. However, that is uh, not going to be enough mutas. No, sir. And Shark Sharkling does seem to hit a drone cap of 19. Where it says, that's all the workers I need. What am I going to do with 20 drones? Nobody needs that many drones. And as a result, Sharkling is just kaput. GG. So yeah, stay tuned. And we'll, uh... I'll throw these two videos together, the previous cast that I did, and you guys can check it out. Let me know what you think of Sharkling. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 bot AI cast. We have got one that I'm excited for here today, as it is gonna be. Sharkling, that's right, not Shark Bot, but Sharkling, a uh, bot programmed by the author of Shark Bot, the best Protoss bot, or at least probably the most fun to watch one. And so, the Zerg counterpart, and we're here to check out how well developed it is. I was just checking through some, some of Evil Zoe's opponents. Evil Zoe, a bot that I really enjoyed the last match that I cast. So I thought I'd do another. Then I saw Shark Ling. What about uh, Shark Bot? <laughs> but I thought, let's uh, let's check out the new guy on the block. Or the, the new kid on the block, I guess. And so we're on Equilibrium. It's a Zerg versus Zerg, but more importantly, a bot versus bot match. We're going to see how these two bot authors went about programming their Zerg bots in order to gain an upper hand on each other. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you're the best at it. Make sure to go ahead and click that like button. Just give it a little clicky clack. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. This channel is the home for StarCraft 2 botcasts, I think it's safe to say. Join the Discord, which is linked down below, and consider becoming a YouTube member if you do want to support the channel, as we're one away from hitting our goal of 10. We do have a queen on the way now for Sharkling. It's got out a spawning pool. Now ZVZ can be a little bit ruthless. So, <laughs> so I'm almost a bit worried for the new kid on the block. I'm like, oh man, is it going to be okay? Uh, or is Evil Zoe just going to bop it? Now we do have Sharkling making a lot of lings early on. Six lings already. Is that safety or is that going to be into potential aggression? Either way, we do have Evil Zoe going for roaches. And I think roaches are a hundred million percent the way to go when it comes to playing a ZVZ. As just being able to burrow them, keep them alive, makes them do a, a lot better against lings than, say, regular. Than in a regular ZVZ. Like, sometimes Zerg can play with lings a little bit. In bot matches, not really. Not so much. Now we do have Sharkling running in with one of its lings, gonna spot that roach horn. Sucks to be a meat bag, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> Says Sharkling. Uh, for those of you wondering, Sharkbot, and I guess Sharkling were originally a chat bot that somehow ended up playing a game of StarCraft 2. And so we do have an Overlord scouting on out along with the Ling Scout. 
it's like there is a lair on the way for Sharkling. That's very bizarre. Such a quick lair. Is it going to be for a Spire? Because there's no Roach Warren. There's no Evo Chamber. I think this has got to be a Spire play coming out of Sharkling. If I was to look at this as a human game, I'd be like, yeah, 100%. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the case or not, but I honestly don't mind a Muta play against all of the Zerg bots that play heavily with the Roaches and the Lings, as, I mean, obviously Muta's Roaches don't shoot up. And so what's the tech going to be, Sharkling? Show, show us your hand. What is it? What do you got? It's making two overlords. Okay, there it is. A Spire play. Cool. It's been so long since I've seen one of these. Now, will Sharkling just die, potentially, before it gets out enough mutas? Sharkling saying, do you think flying units should be able to burrow too? I mean, I could see a Zerg unit that does that, that can go from, like, air to ground. Like, like it could land. I mean, flies can land. Why can't Zerg units let them dig into the ground too? Now, we do have the Spire on the way, but we're only... 40 seconds away from that completing. Evil Zoe has actually just gotten horrendously supply blocked. Like, what happened here? Oh my gosh, Evil Zoe just... I, I've been so focused on Sharkling that, like, Evil Zoe has totally just bugged out this game. It is at 35 out of 36 supply, and it has got 3,000 minerals in the bank, but it has not made anything. Oh dear. Um, not like this. I was, I was like, huh, Evil Zoe's not making too many aggressive units. Turns out it's not making anything. And it took me quite a while to notice that. So I apologize to anyone that yelled at their screen. And now, the question is gonna be, is, will Evil Zoe be able to, uh, come back here? I'm having my doubts. As it's supply blocked heavily, so I'm guessing it was supposed to make something... That would then prompt another overlord, or did it lose an overlord? No, it hasn't lost anything. It's just completely melted. Even <laughs> Why did this happen? I'm curious to see if, like, an overlord dies, if it will potentially start making stuff. So, like, are the mutas going to kill an overlord or kill a ling or something? There we go. Okay, Evil Zoe has broken its supply block. But right now it is playing with a lot of handicap. Three overlords are on the way at a time. I'm not sure what prompted that, maybe losing one of its lings or something, but now it's got a lot of lings running into its base, and I should have checked this replay. Not not that I ever check any replays before I cast them, but like... <laughs> and it clearly shows Sharkling, uh, yeah, I think has just won this game. Okay. Well, it goes to show that uh, bugged out matches happen even when you're the best even when you're one of the best Zerg bots, you just randomly just don't feel like getting out of bed in the morning, and that's what Evil Zoe effectively did. It's got no anti-air to speak of to deal with these mutas, so it's probably just gonna die. And yeah, that ain't good. The lings can just keep flooding. Evil Zoe has had a big bank to burn through, but it's lost most of its workers. It's making a couple of spore crawlers now. I just don't think there's a chance that it wins this game. It's up against 14, 14 mutts. And as a result, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is what happens on the ladder all day, every day. Just happens that it was one of the replays that I clicked on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not your usual bot game. However, it is an accurate representation of what happens in these bot games. It's that somehow a bot will just bug out, not make anything. And so if you want to see a rematch between these two in which presumably Evil Zoe doesn't stroke out, let me know. Join the Discord, which is linked down below. Leave a comment. And I don't know if I'm going to upload this one. <laughs> on, the, on the one hand, I'm like, eh, I already cast the game. Let's uh, upload it as there is a lot of selection bias when it comes to my replays. So this is something that happens in these bot games. I'll definitely cast another Sharkling game though, now that I know the author is making one of those. We do have a Spore building at that third base, but Evil Zoe is beyond dead. What a game. What a play, what a game. Whoa, Nelly. Oh, 
Things killing everything off. And that is gonna be that. I say that, but then evil is always like, we will rebuild. I don't know how to make an overlord, but I'm gonna rebuild my entire empire. Okay, Sharkling, you can do it. You can find you can find your opponent. Okay, a few mutas did. Spore crawler gets killed off. <laughs> it almost let Evil Zoe rebuild in this game, but uh, it was not meant to be. GG.